In this Eye in the Sky session, we'll be examining some of the zone drops taken by each team in Montana State's 23-10 loss to Northern Arizona. If you've been paying attention to what the Bobcat players and coaches have been saying following the loss, or if you just wanted to go off the final score, it's obvious uh, MSU feels as though they performed worse in this area than NAU. So let's uh, take a, a look at why the Bobcats struggled. We'll, we'll break down two plays where the Bobcats allowed the NAU receivers just too much space in one play where uh, the Bobcats were burned trying to make an adjustment. And uh, we'll go uh, to, uh, to a look shown by the Lumberjacks that was much more effective against the Bobcat pass attack. So in this first clip here, we'll examine the coverage on the near sideline. You'll see Zach Coleman on the edge, Chase Cazero underneath, and Jordan Craney over the top. They're all playing a cover two type zone with the middle linebacker Clay Bignell coming on the blitz. As we go ahead and roll it here, keep your eyes on NAU quarterback Michael Herrick. He notices the blitz and realizes he has to get the ball out quickly. He also notices that uh, what plagued the Bobcats all game long. There's a good 15 yard hole in the Bobcat zone coverage that's just too big of a hole, especially when you consider both safeties on this play are still in their back pedal. Now, uh, now what Herrick also notices is that the hole in the Bobcat coverage is even bigger on the outside, where he has his top receiver, Ed Berry, who ends this game with uh, 12 catches for 182 yards and a touchdown. As you can see, MSU safety Jordan Craney has even farther to go to help Coleman over the top, and Herrick knows he won't be able to get there in time, so he stays calm in the pocket, lets his running back, Alex Henderson, pick up the blitz and, and fire the strike over the top of Coleman and underneath Craney for a nice 25-yard uh, game. These types of plays repeatedly killed the Bobcats on Saturday. With that in mind, let's take a look at another one of those types of plays. On this particular example, the Bobcats are in more of a man coverage on the edges with their corners, Corey Nickel and Kevin Rotoriano matched up outside. But uh, as we roll this one just a little bit here, it's, it's important to note uh, that Alex Henderson goes in motion here to the right. Herrick notices that no linebacker or safety uh, chooses to follow Henderson a, a little bit uh, in, in his move across the formation, which probably tips Herrick off that MSU is at least zoning the middle part of the field. So uh, with that in mind, kind of keep your focus on linebackers Jody Owens on the far side, Chase Gazzaro over here on the near side, as well as the two safeties on the play, Jordan Craney towards the top of your screen, and Mike Ryder towards the bottom of your screen. We'll start the play, and you'll see middle linebacker Clay Bignell once again sucked up toward the line out of coverage. It seems that might be something Herrick also notices as it kind of leaves the middle of that field wide open. He also sees Owen and, Giz and Gazzaro, uh, Gazzaro especially, floating around in no man's land. And once again, uh, both Bobcat safeties are about 20 yards away from the line of scrimmage and still in their back pedal. So Herrick drops a dime right over the middle of the field to a slot man, catches the ball with a five yard radius of space between him and, and four Bobcats that are zoning up the middle of the field. That's not what you want to see in zone, and it's a big reason that MSU struggled Saturday. Now let's take a look at an adjustment MSU seemed to have made to try and combat some of the, the zone problems they experienced earlier in the game. In this play, you're going to once again see Chase Cazero as the linebacker on the near side of the field. But uh, this time, he teams up on that side of the field with safety Anthony Cosme Paco and uh, Kevin Rotoriano, who's down here on the edge playing corner. As we roll the tape, you'll see Herrick reads the back pedal of at least two of those defenders on that side, which probably tips him off that MSU is in a zone. But this time, instead of retreating, Cosme Paco, the, the safety back there, his first step is towards the line of scrimmage. So as we continue to roll the plate, that seems to as continue to roll the tape, I should say that that seems to help MS, the MSU safety uh, clean up the coverage gaps MSU had experienced earlier in the game as he locks down NAU slot receiver well on this play. But uh, Rotoriano, who was probably expecting safety help over the top, lets Barry by once again, and Cosme Paco is now stuck below the play and doesn't necessarily have a good angle that a safety wants to come down and level, uh, level Barry with a big hit. So Herrick throws another great ball, and, and Barry is once again able to pick up another easy 30-yard gain. And finally, let's take a look at NAU's take on zone coverage. I'm going to have to apologize early on for not knowing the names of the players on NAU's defense on this particular clip, but uh, let's go ahead uh, with my circles and position titles and kind of read this play. It's, it's also worth noting, though, before we really get into this play, that NAU isn't in a full-on zone here. On this particular uh, examination, the Lumberjacks are in man coverage uh, with only one strong safety playing zone as he kind of provides help over the top. 
as we roll this clip, you'll see that every single NAU defender that's uh, in man coverage is giving his responsibility plenty of cushion, but not so much that any of them can really run completely free. Uh, however, there is one receiver, Elvis Akla, kind of over here in the middle of the field that does have some room to work um, uh, across that, that center of the field. So as uh, MSU quarterback Mark Giddens rolls to his right to, on this play-action pass, he's going to fire Akla's way. The, the only difference here is NAU's strong safety in the middle of the field um, is, uh, is, is just a little bit different spot than MSU safeties on the three previous plays we've, we've, uh, we've examined. Uh, like MSU safeties, um, the strong safety is close to 25 yards in the line of scrimmage, but there's there's one key difference. You know, before Idens has even begun the motion to throw, this uh, NAU strong safety is out of his back pedal and moving towards the line of scrimmage, as he sees no MSU receiver is going to beat him deep. So, as uh, as we kind of roll this one, you'll see Idens' pass go in the direction of Akpla, and you'll see that NAU strong safety in perfect position to break up the play as he lowers a nice hit on Akpla. Now, uh, you know, like I said, it's worth noting that uh, this is more of a man coverage uh, than the, the plays of the Bobcats that we examined. But this NAU strong safety does a great job in his zone responsibility on this particular play, uh, much better than, it, than the job done by any MSU defender we examined today.